Nama Hello. penuh arah apa ya? Aramai Sarah Wan. Wow, you're the only one with Aramai Sarah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Aramai Sarah Wan. When eh, did you come to know about your brother as being an artist? Artistic, in that sense. Well, I was just like a kid. Like, I knew nothing. <laughs> like, my brother was like, always hyper running around the house. I thought it was like normal aja. And then as I grew older, like around like Tadika, my parents started like telling me about autism, like building it up from like the basics. So kalau I, ada orang tanya I, I don't know what to say lah. Like apa ni autism, da, 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 how I grew up with it. So then as I grew older, my parents started telling me more and more about it lah. Mm. Until now, yeah. But you you do notice the difference of your. I mean, if you go compared to people yes. around at school and all that. Yes. What what basically do you find a bit strange for you? To, I mean, for for your brother in your brother that you see as compared to many other people around. Well, first off, my brother obviously tak leh cakap. He can't speak, mm. and then he like, I wouldn't say like shouts, but like he sings like a lot, like. Like not really sing with words lah, but you know what I mean. Like his own rhythmic song. Plus two, he like his ADHD is like really high. He won't sit down for like one second. Mm. He has to walk around twenty four seven. And like a lot of other things lah, dia sometimes mengamo like that tantrums like that. Mm. When you got to know, uh, when do you got to know about all these things about autism and all that? You you read about it or you yeah. learned it from your parents? My parents, mm. mostly my mm. mom and dad yang aja ayla. Mm. Yeah, whenever like they have free time to tell me or like I just tanya, they will tell me lah. They will teach me. Yeah. Now, how's your relationship with your your brother? Yeah. Well, he's my abang, but. I treat him like my own adik because I take care of him. <laughs> so instead of me being the adik, like he's the adik because like... You're I, the kakak lah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the kakak. So like I like uh, cook for him. I like take care of him. Sometimes I'll help him like how to like write, how hmm. to do list. Hmm. Yeah, I help him like brush his teeth some more like basic lah. Yeah. How, I mean, what's how does he relate, relate to you, react Do you do you communicate? I I wonder how you communicate with Adam. Well, I treat him like a normal brother. I bully him sometimes. <laughs> oh my god! Like, how how like do you bully him? Notice. <laughs> <laughs> like I bully him jela, and then they like bully me back sometimes. So like a normal sibling relationship, just because like the other autism doesn't mean like any like boundaries or barriers. Like it's just normal sibling. Mm-hmm. Like I bully him, he bully me back. Sometimes he make me cry also. <laughs> mm. Okay, which I mean, when you say bullying, maybe, maybe could you give an example, a simple example? Mm. Oh, okay. I remember this one time. I was probably like ten years old, good ten years old, and Adam was like really cheeky, then really cheeky, and I think I'm my mind like catch catch with my sister like we throw like the pillow at each other and catch it so then my brother nampak lah kita like throwing the pillow at each other <laughs> so then dia ambil the pillow and throw at my face like oh my throw God. at me but like not like really hard like throw at me and then like I take a joke like <laughs> throw at my face and then dia like menggelak gelak like laughing I'm like oh my God Adam and then he just like laughing and then like another time I was like talking with my mom. In the kitchen, bus tu, my brother was also like very cheeky. He started chasing me, hmm. like tag. He like started <laughs> chasing me around the house. I was like running, 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 and he was chasing me, so like that lah. Yeah. Okay. When did me you cry? <laughs> um. Sometimes Adam can be violent without him knowing because like they tak tahu like. Um, if he's violent or not, if he's like hurting others, he doesn't know that. So like sometimes he can hurt other people unintentionally, and then he wouldn't know. So then sometimes he would like hurt me on accident. Like sometimes like scratch me ka apa ke, but like it's tak sengaja lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What 
do you, I mean, how do your friends or people around you react when they know that you have a brother called Adam who is autistic? Well, like my close, close friend, like come by, by, I like that thing to my house all the time. They like know like about Adam, his mengamo, tantrum semua, they know. But like people yang, my friends yang tak pernah like na, uh, met Adam before, they know nothing like my new friends like that. Um, it's really hard for me to explain to them because like, like this new generation, um, people take autism as a joke. Mm. It's not brought to awareness enough. So like a lot of like teenagers these days think of autism, which is like, oh yeah, it's another like penyakit, not a big deal. But like, actually it's really hard to explain. So like whenever like my friends like ask me about Adam, I cannot explain in details about, I want them to know I not, they are paham. Mm. But like to my close, close friends, they know Adam lah. They also know like how he acts at home, how he acts outside of home. They've seen him like mengamo semua. So like, yeah. Mm. So I can relate like closer to all my closer friends because they know about Adam. Because like the hard thing about having like my friends, they're always like, eh, hey, Ara, can I come to your house? Like, jom kita play dek at your house. But I don't know how to like tell them about Adam. Because mm. like, I don't want to like show off Adam like, oh, my brother's autistic. Like, I don't want to like say it like that lah. So then I cannot explain to them. It's quite hard. I have to be like, oh, so like, you see my brother has autism and they're like, huh, what is that? So it's really hard sometimes to explain, especially to my teachers. Like, uh, my mom, sometimes she have to go to school, tell my teachers about Adam or my like my dad tells my teacher about Adam. Yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they go to school to explain about Adam for you or what? Mm, for me. Why? So, but... Mm, Uh, ada some cases where Adam mengamuk in the morning like dia bangun and I baru nak pergi sekolah but all of a sudden dia mengamuk out of nowhere so then we will have to stay home and I'll be like really late for school so bila I sampai the teachers don't know about Adam so they're like they punish me lah mm. so like kalau my parents know kalau the teacher know about Adam dia more understanding and sometimes my parents can't show for like parent teacher meets mm. due to my brother So like uh, everything has to be online because mm-hmm. my dad can't leave the house. Mm-hmm. Now having to experience all that, what does it make you? I would definitely say like I'm quite mature, more mature uh, compared to my other friends because like I want to say I take things like seriously, seriously. Like I joke around too, but be like I would say I'm more mature in like life skills wise mm-hmm. like in life like I know what to do I'm more like have more knowledge on mm-hmm. that yeah you're 13 but you speak like you're 31 <laughs> <laughs> okay okay having a brother like that going you go also on online mm. how's the response like from the crowd well we obviously have our family account Adam's Autism Family So most of my followers know me as Adam's adik, Adam's sister. So like, I guess they will already know about Adam because they follow me from Adam's autism family account juga. So I don't get much as a response. But like, I know that in most videos, Young Future Adam get more likes, get more views, get more comments compared to videos of just me mm-hmm. or like my videos of me and my friends definitely kind of feature Adam it will like blow up lah viral <laughs> Now, doesn't it feel I mean do you feel a bit like okay that you are not the focus it's Adam that adds value to you how do you feel about it? I think it as a blessing actually mm. I'm really thankful for that I don't think it as like oh my brother is like more famous than me no I want to like I actually want the world to know about Adam more because like I really think autism awareness should be spread more mm. especially in now generation where people take autism as a joke so I want people to know about that especially Adam's condition he has severe autism and some people think autism is just like oh like you can't talk and stuff because like some autisms are just mild autisms yeah. some autisms are like really smart that comes with a talent 
but Adam's condition is quite rare. It's mm-hmm. like really severe autism. So I want like like the world to know, I guess. So I'm really grateful and bersyukur that I have a brother like yeah. Adam that I could sh- like share my story with. Yeah, you know, when I, when you talk about this, I, I see you as uh, a representative of a sister helping other sisters who are facing the same thing or other um, teenagers like yourself facing the same issue at home, obviously, right? How to deal, how to cope with yeah. a brother or a sister who has autism. Yeah. And you can be the representative or you could be the ambassador for that. <laughs> so you should play that role, really. Because this is what's lacking. Now, people talk about autism as the person who's having the autism. Um, okay? But people don't talk about how to relate to that. If you're a sister, what would you do? How would you handle this? Which you're telling me now, I tell you, as I said, you're more mature than many other teenagers. So play that role. I think you can go far, right? So it becomes like then Adam and Ara platform it's not just, <laughs> yeah uh, just not it's, it's adam platform ara uh, comes in <laughs> or it's yours now coming back to this year attention right you know that your dad even your mom has to put sometimes more attention to adam because of his situation how does it make or the, how, do, how does it make you feel mm, definitely when i was younger i didn't understand like When I was in like primary school, like maybe I was like eight, nine years old, I used to be, I want to be honest, like I used to be really upset that my dad can't spend much time with me because of Adam. Because I always see like all my other friends, mm-hmm. they get to like go out with their parents a lot, go out with their family, like do things with their fam- uh, parents, like activities. Like uh, before I was born, Uh, during my sister's time when she was like around my age my sister and my brother they're only like two years apart so then Adam wasn't that severe back then he was still like a good boy he was like <laughs> mild so then my dad went to work during then and my mom got to spend like more time with my sister they did like stuff together so then thinking back I'm like sometimes I feel sad that I want to do more stuff for my parents like Uh, the other day, my dad and I and my sister went to a mama store. And I was so happy. I went out eating with my dad. Like, I was so unbelievably happy. Like, pergi mama aja, I'm so happy. Like, do you eat too much? No. <laughs> <laughs> But like, those little moments that I spend yes, with my parents, yes. I really appreciate. And even though Adam gets most of the attention, now I start to like, understand Since I'm older, I understand why they give Adam the attention. I even help my parents take care of Adam because my parents are like humans too. They need a break as well. They're not robots. They can't take care of Adam 24-7. So like sometimes I step in like, don't worry dad, you can go work. Don't worry mom, you can go rest. I will like take care of Adam for you guys. So I just think on Adam for them. But definitely I wish that Uh, younger me could spend more time with my parents. I wanted to do more of them. But definitely, I was closer with my mom because she's the one that like, sent me to school every morning. I spend most of my time with her because my dad is either busy taking care of Adam or busy working mm-hmm. because my dad has to work from home due to Adam as well. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, he can't even work because Adam is always like pulling him around. Mm-hmm. So I'm really grateful that my parents try so hard to balance the love between me, my brother, and my sister. Right. We talked a little bit about Adam, but now how's your relationship with your sister right now? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hmm. Okay. You're at the home for. Well, as normal siblings, we fight a lot. Okay. Like we fight like even over the smallest things. We fight uh, uh, a lot. That's natural. And yeah, it's natural. But like, my parents always told me that my we only have each other, me and my sister. We have no one else. It's just us. So if we have no one, it's just like my sister has me and I have her. Mm. So no matter how much I feel like I want to punch her face sometimes, I want to throw her sometimes because <laughs> she can be quite annoying sometimes. 
I still love her like deep down. And we know that if anything were to happen, like we will have each other's backs. And then us as sisters, we just do whatever we can for each other lah. Even though like we fight a lot or feel like we hate each other, but we know that we love each other. Mm. Now you're just 13. But I I feel you you have already a kind of um, aspiration to become someone. So what's your ambition? Well, I definitely don't want to take part in the entertainment industry. Like my sister is an actress mm-hmm. and I want to become a host. Okay. I want to be like a presenter like you. Okay. Yeah, I want to be like, oh, like, like, Not like a competitor. Like I look up to <laughs> you. Competitor. <laughs> no, no, no. You are you know, a colleague. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, good. Good. So, so uh, having that said, how do you plan to go about reaching that? Would you wait until you are 21 or you can start now? Well, I definitely think that I already have my own Instagram account. I have my TikTok account. Uh, so I think I can start from there, you know. I can start from there from my Instagram account. And then as time goes on, I will build up some more and more and more. And by the time, probably I'm like, I don't know, in the future when I'm like 17, 18, maybe I'll start hosting or mm-hmm. maybe even like, after school, I don't know, but inshallah, like yeah. my my dreams yeah. and hopes might come true. You start. You you're already starting now. Yeah. You're already starting now. I'm starting so. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Right. So go for it. Now, we've talked about your your sister. We've talked about Adam. Now let's talk about your mom. You're closer to your mom than your dad. You say because of that time that you have more with it, mm. your mom. Yeah. So, uh, what about now? as compared to those days when she's more sending you here and there and you've got more quality time with her? Well, definitely. Um, I'm closer to my mom every second, like every day. Every second, yeah? Yeah, Ooh. like like our bond grows stronger and stronger and stronger. Like my love for, mom, for my mom is like, unbelievable really big, like bigger than the universe same goes to my dad I'm not favoriting here okay mm. I'm not favoriting I love both my parents equally but um, my mom and dad tries very hard for me especially since I'm the youngest and I'm still in school because my sister's already working so like I'm the only uh, daughter that is currently in school so I'm trying my best for them I want to like do my best for them because I want them to be happy. I don't want to disappoint them at all because they've already done so much for me. They've raised me to become such an amazing person. I'm proud of who I am today because of my parents. They raised me and I'm really grateful for that. I have such great parents. Right. Now, let's talk about people outside. Now, if you have the opportunity to talk to them, uh, to those people of your age who has the same issues that you are facing, mm. what would you advise them? I'll definitely like give them like what I went through. Cause like if we were to have the same story, like relate, like the same situation, I would definitely like tell them how I dealt with it. So I would tell them like what I did, how I felt during the situation and how I solved the problem. And hopefully, maybe they, I did help them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what about your message to the parents? Right? To the parents. And to see if, for example, yes, they have a child who's having or who's facing autism. But what would you advise them? Or what would you say to them to help them to manage the other children? apart from the one who's facing autism? Well, I would definitely advise that even though you have to take most of your time focusing on the autistic child because it needs most of the attention, but you have to pay attention to your other children as well. You don't want them to feel left out because coming from me, there were times that I did feel left out. There were times where I felt like my parents would pay more attention to me, but 
I try to understand as well. I want to be understanding. I don't want just to blame, blame, blame. I want to understand as well. So like to the parents out there, even though you're like trying your best to balance like all the children's like love towards them, uh, make sure just like don't make them feel left out because that's like the most that like, you could feel hurt. It may not seem like a big deal, like being left out, like you're all just left out, like don't be dramatic. But actually like deep down, it kind of hurts being left out. It feels like you're not important. It mm. feels like there are other things in the world that your parents would care more about than you. Mm. So then like to the parents, just make sure that your child feels prioritized. Make sure, make sure your child feels like they have a reason to be in this world. Not that just because they're here to do nothing. Mm. Make them have like an understanding why they are like here. And obviously just love them. That's mm. the most important thing. Like love. All love right. is definitely like really powerful. What about the message to the people that like you? They're having the kind of family that you have, for example. So what would you advise them? You have to try to understand, at least try. You don't have to understand, but you have to think at least like, oh, why does my parents like pay more attention to my sibling? You have to understand. And also, you have to put your shoe, put yourself in your parents' shoes. Like, understand like how they're, they are struggling. Because mm -hmm. I believe that my dad and my mom are also struggling as well. Mm -hmm. So... I do whatever I can to help them, even the smallest things. Like if my dad or my mom is tired, like they need a break just to like to have like a short power nap, I'll be like, yeah, go ahead. Like, like take like a rest. I'll watch Adam. So I try to do whatever I can to help them and be understanding. Mm -hmm. So just like, how do I say it? Just understand how others are feeling, not only yourself. Mm. Because back then, I was really selfish. I'm going to be honest. My I was quite selfish. I did not want... I wanted everything to be about me. All right? I wanted everything about me. But as time went on, as I grew older, I started becoming a more understanding person. So then, here I am now. Yeah. You have grown to be an adult in just a minute, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last but not least, since... Okay, say for example, and then this is just just a thing that I will do to ask anyone that I, I interview, right? To take into consideration, what if, what if, for example, that your parents, I mean, they are not young. Yeah. If they were to leave this world, as everybody would be, what would be your message to them before they leave? So, back a few months ago, <laughs> sorry. Back a few months ago, I used to have like lots of dreams that my dad and mom would leave. Cause, oh my God, what's wrong with me? It's okay. I used to have a big fear that I'll be left alone because I have a brother like Adam and I was scared for his like future for himself and my mom and dad are like not young they're quite old already so every single night I had dreams of them like leaving you can ask my mom I was like crying every night mm -hmm. because I could not sleep like the moment I closed my eyes You'd I would be have that. be dreaming of that dream. Yeah, it was a, it was like really Repeating. scary. I hated it so much. So then my mom always like spoke to me, telling me like one day that mommy and daddy have to leave one day and I would have to take care of Adam with my sister. And I've always wanted to take care of my brother. I put him as one of my top priorities because I love him very much but the message I would tell my parents 
is probably thank you. Yeah, thank you because they already did so much for me. They raised me to become such an amazing person. And I'm really grateful that like they have loved me and supported me all the way. Especially my dad for trying so hard to like um making me happy, like loving me and especially to my mom. She definitely did the most for me. She always like fight for me. She does everything for me. I don't know like how to like repay her after all she's done for me. I wasn't expecting to cry on this podcast. <laughs> like, I was like so well, happy. But like- definitely like my mom, she's the reason why I am always smiling every morning, every day. Like when she's sad, I'm sad. When she's happy, I'm happy. Like the only thing I want to do is just to make my mom happy, make her proud. Because she literally does everything for me. Like she raised me. She loves me. She cared for me. And I know that she would like literally die for me. So I don't know how to repay her. I don't know how to say thank you to her. So Uh, the last message is just like, thank you. That's all. Yeah. Okay. One more last. Oh my God. One more. (laughs) One one last one. If you talk to Adam and Adam can understand you, say, who knows, Allah is kind enough to give that moment when you can talk to him This is when your parents are not around. So what would you say to him? I would tell him that I'm sorry for not being the best sister because growing up, I already told you that I was quite selfish. I wasn't that understanding. I didn't put Adam as one of my top priorities. Most of the time, I would have like, like, like inside, I like, sometimes I binchy with him. Sometimes I like so dinky, like, yee, like that. Mm-hmm. I have that feeling inside, like last time. And whenever I see Adam, I always like feel so guilty that I had that feeling. I'm like, why did I ever dinky with my brother? Why did I binchy him? Like, he did nothing. He's just being himself, like. He does. He did nothing to me, so like, why should I like feel that way to him? Until today, I still think about that. And my brother, I know that he can't talk. He doesn't know how to express his emotions, but I know that he loves me very much. He loves my sister. He loves my mom, my dad. I know that he loves us very much, and. I felt like I didn't give the love that he deserved. Um, And for me, being his sister, I felt like inside, I should have supported him more and loved him more because I tell my parents all the time that I would take care of Adam in the future if anything were to happen. Like I would like put Adam as my top priority. I would make sure that he was taken care of, he was cared for, he was like watched everything. And I do want to do that in the future. I do want to take care of my brother. But then I felt like I should have done more like that. So if Adam were to talk, I would just tell him, I'm sorry for not being the best sister. Like, I wish I could give you more. I wish I could give you like way more like as much as you deserve. Okay, how are you? I'm fine, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> how are you? Um, I'm always fine. <laughs> <laughs> Question first, what's your full name actually? Eh? 
Okay. Hi. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Arina Wan Manyi, binti Iman Wan. Wow. Tapi boleh panggil Arina je. Arina je yeah. atau Arina? Arina. Arina. <laughs> Arina okay. Now, uh, kita mulakan dengan cerita pertama. Pertama, senang saja. Uh, bilakah Arina mulai menyadari yang adik Arina itu menghadapi masalah autisma? Saya rasa umur umur lapan lah, like I mentioned. Lapan <laughs> <laughs> tahun. Lapan tahun baru sedar. Lapan tahun betul, baru eh? sedar. Tapi sebelum tu apa sebelum yang tu, berlaku? Tak tahu lah. Sebelum tu, I hmm. rasa macam he's normal, just like any other kid out there. He acts normal. I don't know. To me, he acts normal. Maybe to others, he would look weird to them lah. Hmm. But then, uh, the older I got, rasan juga lah karakteristik yang um, tak normal Antara macam karakter hmm? macam mana dia tak buat eye contact bila kita panggil nama dia, and since he's also non-verbal, dia ada lah buat bunyi bunyi dia, his noises, he's in his own world basically hmm. dalam dunia dia sendiri. So dari situ saya macam Okay, he he's different. Mm-hmm. He's not normal like other kids out there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and I remember I did. My parents actually they had to educate me mm. about Adam. Cerita lah. Oh, adik you special. Dia ada autism. Dia tak macam budak-budak yang lain di luar sana. So dari situ I belajar lah slow-slow. Ah. Mm. Uh-uh. So you you read a lot about it? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at that at that time tak adalah. Mm-hmm. Sebab I was still a kid kan, kecil mm-hmm. lagi. And then I think I start to read about it bila I masuk sekolah menengah. Mm. How was life masa mula-mula tu bila dapat tahu dia mengalami autism? Um before this when I was in primary school tak tahu lah nak cerita macam mana. I don't really try to remember much about my past. Wow, that's interesting. Sebab, For any good reason? Sebab I'm a very emotional person tau. Oh. And I'm very sentimental. Oof, so, <laughs> so, I akan automatically remember the smallest details, even the things yang buat I rasa terasa, rasa sedih, rasa down. And kalau boleh, I nak avoid those feelings. Hmm. Yeah. You, tak nak, you tak nak singgah sana? Uh-uh. So, I remember time I 10 tahun, 11 tahun, at that age, few of my friends, diorang akan, uh, diorang tak faham lah, diorang tak faham kenapa dengan adik you. And there was times yang I do go to school late because my parents need to send me to school lah. Tapi diorang sendiri pun penat nak hantar I pergi sekolah because their sleeping schedule is crazy. Yes. Dia lambat, kena stay up to take care of Adam. So, I would go bilik. to school late lah, bilik. And then, cikgu akan tanya, students akan tanya, my classmates akan tanya, kenapa? You lambat, Rina. Uh, ada family emergency kita. Uh, we also have family problems. We also have masalah dekat rumah. Excuses, excuses. Tapi, tak tahu nak cerita macam mana. But that's, that's the truth lah. Memang ada urusan family emergency dekat rumah with my brother. My parents will always tell me, cakap je, my brother, guna Adam as alasan. Mm. Memang that's the truth lah. Tapi, mm-hmm. diorang sendiri, they, they don't really understand. They don't understand. So, I nak kata, oh, adik I special, dia autism. Diorang macam tak, uh, tak faham. How long was that kind of fact? experience you had got to go through berapa lama sampai sekarang <laughs> uh, throughout my school years lah sekolah rendah sekolah menengah sekolah rendah I don't really expose my brother that much I was just I'm all about nak pergi sekolah nak play with my friends uh, buat aktiviti-aktiviti semua tu um They don't really, I mean, okay lah. Time sekolah rendah, it was not as bad lah compared to sekolah meninggah. Sekolah rendah, I go to school, don't really talk much about my brother. My closest friends je lah yang tahu. And, uh, 
it was I don't know I don't like I mentioned I don't really try to remember like the smallest details unless it's memories yang I am happy about cuma sekolah menengah tu it was quite tough lah mm. what do you mean by tough? tough um I I grew up memang side by side dengan my brother 24/7 with my family. Mm, I rasa my circle of friends is not that large. I'm not great in communicating, engaging conversations. I I thought I've always felt really weird because I'm always stuck at home je kalau nak pergi rumah kawan pun tu pun jarang I'm always at home I don't really know how to socialize so lagi-lagi nak berkawan lagi like, memang tak reti lah mm-hmm. so itu satu and um, I'm very scared to open up about myself and my condition and my family because takut diorang akan judge Because I'm also someone who overthinks a lot. I overanalyze. I over. I overanalyze things a lot. I overthink a lot. I'm over emotional, mm. sensitive. It's like the worst yes. combination. No, it's it, it's good for people who wants to go into drama, TV. Itu, itu dari kecil. I think I was influenced by my. It was the influence from my dad. Mm. But I think oh, he begins to do all the time. Oh. I think oh, he does music. What lagu semua. And then my mom pun dulu dia, uh, and she manages Air Fazira. So mm-hmm. the stories that I hear from them, what I macam, macam mana the industry? Uh-huh. And then I grew up watching a lot of Disney Channel, all those like high school musical. Mm. Like automatically, I macam I really love the arts. I love anything that's got to do with the arts. And then, um, I feel like I express better through the arts, because like I mentioned, I grew up. Macam kat rumah je, I do not socialize with uh, other people. I, I tak ada tea. So, I express my emotions and everything through whether it's singing, dancing, mm-hmm. movies, everything lah. So, you're doing all those things. You sing, you dance, you just buy everything. You act. Yeah, I I feel like I'm able to express myself better. That, that way, yeah. That way. Right. I realized it when I... Maso like curriculum curriculums, mm. dekat sekolah. Co curriculum sekal. Yeah, sekolah. Dekat sekolah. You excel there. I excel better than my education. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm being honest, I was not the best in my education. Yeah. I'm just gonna be straight up. It is a part of education. <laughs> so I would join um, club music, mm-hmm. club tarian, club theatre. It's I, possibly it's also your your way up from the world that you live in. Yeah, I mean into you know, acting or performing that, you know, you just let go. Yeah, because, you know, like, if I, for example, kalau berlakon kan, you know, you get to play all these sorts of characters mm. kan. I was a very timid and quiet person. Boleh tanya my parents, boleh tanya my friends back in the day. Kalau compare sekarang yang dulu, dulu mm. I quiet je. Oh. I'm a, I'm a yes man. I akan, that's why I kena bully. I selalu kena bully. Okay. Orang dah selalu pijak kepala I. Eh, jahat tu orang. Yeah, because I macam, I ikut cakap orang je. Mm. I ikut cakap orang, I diam, I I don't know how to stand up for myself. I'm not so expressive. I don't know how to. And then, I realized by, you know, acting, by playing a character, I'm able to express my emotions through the character. Mm. Macam kalau tiba-tiba character tu, watak tu, kena marah. Mm. I tak pernah marah, tiba-tiba I dapat marah. Mm. That's the way. <laughs> That's ah, the way. puas. Ah, puas, lepaskan <laughs> semua. Lepas tu, cut. Okay, back to normal. <laughs> Itu ingatkan balik, orang yang kata pada tentang aku ni semua, you pull all that into that, yeah? that yeah. emotion. Now, my, my, my question is more about you now, but now I want to move into Adam. Mm-hmm. Your relationship with Adam, how is it like? Or how high has it been from the day one that you you know him? You get, I mean, you you'll be with him until now. Me and Adam, I rasa, I grew up being by his side all the time. Kita keluar mana mana, stroller sebelah sebelah, jalan sebelah sebelah, and um, he was. 
I guess the only guy best friend that I had growing up at that time. Mm. So usually people would confuse, oh, Adam is older than me. No, I don't know. People think that Adam is older than me, but I'm the yeah. oldest. Size-wise, I would Size-wise, I would be so. Yeah, like, so, 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 <laughs> Adam's tall. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I feel like growing up with Adam, can, he actually, he shaped me to be the person I am today. Mm. Like, I rasa I, I am more i'm a very i'm more patient mm-hmm. even work for him i tak tahu lah i rasa i dem buat i rasa um i have to be tough i have walaupun i lembik macam mana pun <laughs> i rasa tu macam mana pun i boleh sabar mm. dia boleh dia betul-betul test i lah i sabar-sabar so mm. kalau orang bully i pun Oh, I, I, not, sabar, sabar, sabar. That's why I, I macam dah biasa kot. Orang yeah. pijak kepala I. I do, sometimes I don't even realize that. Yeah, sebab, yeah. I tend to brush it aside. My friends call this, you're a good absorber. You absorb all those <laughs> things. <laughs> uh, so, when you say your, your brother is your best friend, right? What do you mean by that? I mean, when I was in primary school, I don't really have a lot of friends, Ken. Okay. And Adam, he can't really speak. It's non-verbal. And I'm always with him all the time. I nak rende kat siapa je. <laughs> I nak rende kat siapa. Sometimes I just talk to Adam like, I'm having a conversation with him. He tak payah to reply, tapi I just cakap je. I talk to him like I'm having a conversation with him. Padahal, he might not understand. I don't know he might understand. But... I had that kind of relationship with him growing up. Sampai lah, I must say, high school. That's where I kind of like was going through my rebellious phase. Mm-hmm. So, but when I when I must high school, I moved to a a school in an environment yang sangat lain lah. Like, because back in the day we stayed in Bukit Jalil, mm-hmm. and I went to uh, SK Seri Saujana. And hmm. SMK Seri Sarjana. So the friends that I have dekat sana, uh, kebanyakan Chinese and Indians. So speaking je lah. So very English. And then bila masuk sekolah menengah, we move to Sentul. So area pun environment lain sikit. Mm-hmm. So that's where I kind of have to adapt to a very Malay environment. Banyak rempit. Mm-hmm. So... Apa lagi? Kena bully lah. Hmm. <laughs> Kena bully lah. So, I experienced all of that and benda tu membuatkan I not only tougher but I guess I kind of like adapted all those traits yang macam membuatkan I lagi kasar rebellious lah. Hmm. So, I think that's why I was a bit a bit distant from my brother sebab I macam Because I, I rasa when I was younger, I asyik dengan Adam je, asyik dengan Adam je. I have no social life. You besides, just want to have a break. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I macam I told myself, I want to be, why can't I be like my other friends? Why I can't be like other teenagers? Because I'm just, I'm stuck at home with my family, with my brother. I don't have like friends outside this. Kalau ada pun, I don't think they really know They really faham. So I, f- I feel left out lah. I will feel left out. So, and then I felt very desperate. I am so desperate to uh, have friends who would understand me and my condition because I don't know. I just feel trapped. I feel isolated. I feel um, like feel weird. I felt weird. So I much time I would do anything to blend in. I would do anything to get friends, even the wrong ways. Macam, kadang-kadang kita tak boleh lah paksa. We cannot... My, my mom always tells me, macam, biar benda tu datang instead of kita cari. Yalah, kalau ada jodoh tu adalah jodoh. You know, like, sometimes we never know the friends, the best friends yang kita akan jumpa pun masuk universiti ke, mm-hmm. 
Tapi I the girl, I tak dengar cakap my mom. I am just that desperate. <laughs> I just <laughs> didn't. I just didn't like what I was feeling. I wanted to get out of that hmm. feeling. Hmm. But I felt lonely. Next yeah, because I was so lonely. Like lonely. Walaupun I have like my family that gives me attention, that loves me, I still feel lonely. I have friends, still feel lonely. I just felt. Um, I I still feel lonely. Here, not there. Yeah. Um. But also partly because um, growing up, when my family kind of, my parents kind of had to um, prioritize my brother a little bit more, so. I kind of felt a little bit neglected, mm-hmm. so I was also trying to understand myself better and find myself better, and maybe through you know experiencing all these things. So I kind of had to learn the hard way, juga lah. Mm-hmm. Kind of have to fall flat on my face to learn. What happened? I mean, um, uh, does it help you to be, I don't know, to go, to go through all that, and then suddenly? something happened that changed you or what? When I was in, when I moved to that school in Sentul, in three years, three, four years, sekolah situ, I I got bullied a lot during high school. Satu sebab, because I come from a very English environment, masuk sekolah tu, semua Melayu, cakap Melayu. Kena teruk lah, satu. So I already felt out of space. And then dua, They are not aware of what is autism. Hmm. But how there there were, there were autistic cats, uh, kids there actually. There was a, a PPKI punya uh, section and area. And yeah. I remember. We can hear. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I was few times I felt so emotional. Sebab apa tau? We had. Uh, kita tak banyak tangga sekolah tu. So every time kita nak naik turun tangga in like lines when we want to go to the science lab ke. Um, computer lab, all that places. We will always bump into the these kids, lah. So usually, um, my classmates not lalu. They're uh-huh. macam geli. Oh, they're not push me in front. They're macam geli geli tak nak dekat dengan all these kids. But then seeing all of their reactions, it kind of like broke my heart, lah. Mm-hmm. I think my best moments during high school was where I just played. Gamelan, because I always wakil sekolah main gamelan je. I'm always excited to stay back after school sebab I nak pergi club music je. I main je music. That was like, I feel like the happiest moments lah kalau I sekolah. Hmm. Other than that, I was not really excited to um, mix around with my classmates and the other students. Cikgu pun kadang-kadang... <laughs> I think there was there were teachers that actually didn't like me just because you know I would come to school late. I was not excelling in my education, sangat. Yes, lah. But yeah, I actually joined that school pun about the music side, music wise. Because mm-hmm. apparently that school you can actually take music for your SPM. Oh, that's interesting. It's interesting, and uh, I joined that school pun because of gamelan because mm-hmm. they banyak uh, wakil sekolah also competitions and uh, I went for that lah. Now, you said you were distant for a while distant with Adam. For, yeah. And then uh, did it improve or what happened? Okay. After that? This is an interesting story. So, when I was going through my rebellious punya face, yeah, yeah. macam, I macam nyampah betul. <laughs> Hidup aku macam ni je. Nothing interesting. Uh, Berkepik je dengan Adam. Kawan aku pula, EJ aku, kata aku ni komplain je. Oh, mas, dan kepala macam, sebenarnya. And then, I, I was distant for like, what, like two years, form four, form five, time Lama. two. Three years, eh? Tak adalah distant-distant macam, Yelah. I I still tolong, but not I as, not as BFF lah. Yeah, not as BFF. I don't, I tak adalah macam spend time dengan dia sangat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just around, Understand. but I don't, I'm not so connected. Like I don't really like want to like bond or spend time in India. And then after I abis school, abis SPM, I joined Dewi Rumaja. Oh, okay. I auditioned for Dewi Rumaja, and 
I realized Adam was one of the reasons why yeah. I'm able to masuk. Okay. And benda tu buat I macam fikir banyak lah. Fikir macam mana? Fikir macam, I don't know, I I got emotional thinking about it because when I think about it, when I went audition, when I went to audition for Diri Rumaja, I I didn't think I would get in. Satu sebab I'm a very insecure person. <laughs> My confidence level memang it's not as great. My mm. self-esteem is pretty low. I don't know because I grew up Yelah, kena bully, kena yeah, macam neglected. I felt alone. I felt isolated. I have all of these negative emotions growing up with all the stress and pressure and um, expectation. So, I cham didn't think I'm great. I didn't think I am gonna gonna do well. I didn't think that I can excel. I remember had that mentality growing up. Kind of sad when I think about it, actually. But, um, so yeah, when I auditioned, Ramai. There were like thousands of oh. girls that went to audition. I I begi pukul sebelas pagi, balik tiga pagi. Oh. And then when I got the results that I got in, I went chum. Tak percaya. Tak percaya. Tak sangka. Then when I fikir balik, is this like a sign, chum Tuhan nak bayar balik because of the sacrifices yang I've made mm. throughout the years, helping my parents, uh, looking out for my brother, and just everything. Yeah, and then when I compete till the end, menang for menang Dewi favorite, mm-hmm. and macam mana how that award works? It's it's by vote, the kiri by vote, mm-hmm. and most of the voters semua pemina Adam followers Adam, <laughs> <laughs> so they're macam okay kita vote kakak Adam kakak, kakak Adam. Adam. <laughs> so benda tu buat Iris macam okay Iris. Alhamdulillah rezeki I pun sebab Adam lah. So despite the hardships growing up with Adam, I kind of eh, got this. And I wouldn't be where I am today pun if it weren't for him. Yeah. yeah. So after after getting all that, your relationship becomes BFF balik atau macam mana? Tak adalah BFF balik. I rasa... I was still going through my rebellious phase. Oh, okay. I was still remaja kan time tu. Kalau ikut kan sekarang pun I I would because uh, I'm I'm working all the time kan. I'm rarely mm. at home. So I jarang dapat spend time dengan my brother. But I I feel like I am more closer to him when I was when I was a yeah. younger. Yeah, yeah. Kind of miss like, those moments where I don't really need to worry about anything. I just want to have fun. I just want to play with my brother. Tak yang nak fikir all those things. Right. Now, when people talk about, uh, you know, I mean, the social media can sometimes can be very harsh. Then, So, when you receive all these comments coming from them against your family, your dad. Mm. So, how... How does it make you feel? You know what's funny? During competing in Dewi Remaja, okay, before I joined pun, we, me and my family, we memang post a lot of yeah. videos to spread awareness, right? And I remember while competing, I get a lot of backlash saying that I am using my brother mm. untuk... Um, Meraih simpati. Yeah, yeah. Nak mendapat undi. Nak dapat undi. <laughs> nak menang Dewi Favourite. Okay. Dia pusing-pusing nak kasih orang kesian. Mm. Padahal, tak ada pun. Mm. <laughs> And um, even after the competition, my family, we do get backlash saying macam, kenapa nak post benda-benda macam ni? Mm-mm. Like, okay, if we don't post, macam mana korang akan tahu? Macam mana korang akan faham? Who's going to spread awareness? Mm. And we do notice like by us posting, more people are starting to open Beware, up yeah. slowly. Macam even family, families yang yang tak pernah tunjuk, tiba-tiba tunjuk. I have a friend yang I kenal dah lama, bertahun-tahun, tiba-tiba reached out to me, Arina, thank you tau for like posting those videos. I follow your family so much. 
Sebenarnya I ada adik autism which I had no idea he had an autistic brother. I dah lama kenal dia. Bertahun-tahun kenal dia. Tiba-tiba. And then apparently he says dia malu. Dia malu dia hmm. nak. Malu nak. Share and tell Yalah. people. Sebab dia malu. I'm and then sad. because we post about hmm. Adam. Dia rasa he's not alone. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why we still continue to post at that time. Banyak lah. Very consistent. Sebab Satu Spread awareness More people are aware Dua People boleh feel like They are not alone Because a lot of people are opening up Yeah And then Alhamdulillah Adalah macam There are like more uh, Spaces that are autism friendly mm. Macam dulu mana ada autism friendly mall There's also like a cinema that's autism friendly Like places like this Makin lama makin Makin ada um, like Ada improvement So I think it's really important that we Spread awareness macam ni yeah. Now Let's talk about uh, You and, and and your mom and dad Right When you say that Sometimes you feel neglected Sometimes you feel as if Uh, you don't have the right kind of love and attention. Mm-mm. Now, uh, how does it affect you, your relationship with your brother, your even your parents and your your sister? Okay. Um, I had a phase where I much like, ada perasaan dengki sikit. Kepat- Tapi it wasn't that long lah. Dia macam semua Adam. Okay. Semua Ara. Hmm. So, I kind of have to like stand up on my own. Understand things on my own. And then I tak tahu. I mean, it didn't really affect my relationship with my siblings that much. It was just how a I feeling. felt. Yeah. A feeling. I just felt sad for myself lah. <laughs> <laughs> You went for this kind of self-pity kind of thing, yeah? Yeah, for a long time actually. How long? For a very long time. How long is long? Years? This is very, uh, this is transparent, right? We boleh ni kan? I mean, yeah, I would say years lah. Years juga. So, benda tu yang buatkan, I macam, I have to be independent on my own. Yeah. I tak boleh rely on anybody cannot be dependent on anybody on anyone so <laughs> so then how do you go about coping with that and then possibly see some light at the end of the tunnel mm, i i don't know i think <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna distract. He, 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 he or she? <laughs> he. Uh, he knows. You know. He knows you're going through this. You know. <laughs> okay. As you were saying. Um, as I was saying, I. I grew up ha- uh, with a lot of anxiety. I actually, I, I for a very long time. So. Sometimes I just don't really know how to handle it. I mean, if I'm being honest, even now, I don't really know how to handle my emotions. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, but I think back then, I, I banyak pendam. So, bila I banyak pendam, all those years, tiba-tiba sekarang macam, it kind of like hit hard. Mm. And when it hit me, I don't really know how to handle them. But, I bukan rasa macam ni sebab sedih-sedih ke apa but like not not wanting to blame anybody it's just it was a tough journey growing up um no negative emotions or energy pun towards my family or siblings but these emotions are mostly sebab Risau for the future. I like I mentioned. I overthink. Yeah, like overthink. Yeah. I'm an overthinker. I feel things too much. I and overanalyze things a lot. Sometimes, macam 
kalau my parents untuk they were kalau they were to advise me things tone sikit ubah pun I boleh fikir something is wrong mm. padahal nothing pun yeah. I je yang overthink mm. I je yang rasa macam alamak alamak are they mad at me are they angry at me padahal tak ada pun I je yang rasa macam tu and it's just me battling myself and these emotions lah but orang seni <laughs> orang seni yeah. goes back to why yeah. I kind of do what yeah. I'm doing lah and the same thing goes back to your father we need to get the blade concentrate right but okay which one do I handle uh, I guess I don't know if I'm going to sekarang pun I'm still trying to work on it lah so what I do is I I guess I distract myself I keep myself busy supaya I tak tak pa, tak layan emotion emotion tu semua Mm. All right. Uh-uh. Now, uh, let's move towards the future. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, uh, now you're. We don't know what the future lies, and you are going through this phase where you're going uh, for this career in the field of uh, quote unquote entertainment, especially, right? So, how would you put yourself? And at the same time, taking into account the reality that you're facing, your family, Adam, and all, in that path towards the future. I don't. I don't think much about it, if I'm being honest. Because you overthink. Eh? Over- 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 overthink. Like, overthink. Satu. So, but I always give myself the space to just go with the flow. If I could, I would love to plan my future. I would love to, but. Uh, we live in a condition where things are very unpredictable. Kadang-kadang kita plan benda, tak jadi. The domino effect. You know, so, as much as I want to like, okay, plan things, which are okay, this is going to happen in the future, in the next three years, next next four years, benda ni akan jadi, benda ni akan berlaku. This is it. I I tak boleh. tak boleh. I tak boleh nak fikir macam tu. I can go with the flow. I got to work with what's going on right now. Mm. That's like that's why bila you tanya soalan macam tu, I tak boleh nak tak boleh jawab. Tak boleh nak jawab sangat. Tapi I ada harapan lah. Tapi harapannya apa? Harapan I we as a family akan lebih happy and at peace and things will be more easier untuk Adam mungkin kita boleh dapat bantuan lebih untuk education or therapy untuk Adam kalau tengok my parents sekarang ni pun I actually kesian I as the eldest I kesian but that's why remember, remember I mentioned I tend to overthink a lot I always think about the future I think a lot about this now. Because one day, I tahu parents I pun, they're not going to be around. I tak nak lah fikir macam tu lah. But like, yeah, of course. we never know. Yeah, yeah. God is great. Anything can yeah, happen. We love God. We love God. <laughs> mm. um, if anything were to happen, I as the eldest, bagai anak sulung, Adam, akan jadi tanggungjawab I. And I worry because What if I tak mampu? I sendiri pun tak mampu nak jaga diri I sendiri. <laughs> nak kena fikir pasal adik dua I. Adam satu, pasal ada lagi. Mm. Another one. And yeah. she has a long journey. Yeah, yeah. Long way to go. And now she just baru masuk sekolah menengah. Mm. <laughs> so, I, it's just, it's not an easy journey lah. That's why, I think that's why we do what we do lah by spreading awareness because it's tough to deal all of this so at least people know that they are not alone going through it. Right. Yeah. What's about what, what about your message to those people like you at your age or your people like you who are facing it but don't know what to do or where to go to and which you were facing all throughout. <laughs> So maybe you can advise them because you have gone through it. What would you be, what would be your, your shall we say, petua-petua, eh? some advice of how to go about 
I rasa this is just my opinion lah because everybody is different semua individu lain cara lain I know there are teenagers yang rebellious like sangat-sangat rebellious <laughs> ada yang dengar cakap ada yang boleh handle ada yang tak boleh handle I personally have friends who actually couldn't stand staying in the same house with their siblings because they just tak boleh they cannot handle it ada yang boleh like I don't know for me I rasa no matter what darah daging you and it's mm. your brother your, it's your sister your brother the other day family tak kisah condition macam mana pun susah memang susah it is tough it's not easy tapi bila you fikir balik God will re- will reward you in the end for all the sacrifice yang you akan buat 